Could you okay for tomorrow? Is he 100%? He, he looks to be. And I would expect him in the lineup tomorrow. Uh, if anything changes, he won't be. But uh, based on today's skate, he was felt good to go. So unless something, unless there's a flare-up, he's good to go. I don't want to make an assumption. Is Anderson your goalie tomorrow? Uh, that would be an assumption, but... Um, yeah, if, if we decide that, uh, we can announce it later or tomorrow morning, but uh, not right now. Talk about Dave Middleton this week. When he, two years ago, he, he went through something, and Kyle was talking about it yesterday, he, he, like, he did a deep dive on his game, he has set things. Like, what, what did you see from him coming out of that, I guess? Like, what did he do and, and what changed right away? I'm sorry, when, when was that, Bill? What? Casey Middlestick yeah. two years ago. Oh, two years ago, okay. You know, he went to the minors. Yeah. Clearly during the long off season, he did a deep dive and he changed some things and he came back a different player. Like, how did you see him like, emerge from that, I guess? Yeah, it, I mean, he emerged from that. He, he emerged, but he was, uh, I guess, intuitive enough and competitive enough to put a lot of different pieces and messages together. Um, and in the context that they needed to be of, you know, maybe his skill set, uh, the experience he's gaining. You know, he went to Rochester. I can remember sitting down with him multiple times watching clips uh, with him when I first got here. Um, he ended up going then to finish the year that first year I, w I was here in Rochester. And I talked to him a lot that summer knowing, you know, he's, he's coming back here, which would have been last season. Um, and he, he just, you could sense and feel the maturing, you know, that he was putting all these pieces of what people had, you know, uh, presented to him, different people, uh, all good people within the game from his, even from maybe his agent to old coaches to, you know, the coaches in the American League, the coaches here. And, and he just, he, you know, it seems like he, he found a way to piece all of that together within the identity of his skill set, uh, just a whole maturation process. I've mentioned many times he's a competitor, so that's all of that is the formula for uh, what we see now out of him. Don, you take the temperature of your team every day. <laughs> Where is if you take your own temperature today, the day before the opener? You've never been a head coach for an NHL opener before. Where are you at today? Uh, I'm good because we had. A, I felt uh, our guys are in a good place. Um, it, it really hard part of coaching is is to not overcoach. And I've learned that long ago, and, and, I've, and I've watched that. I think some of the most successful coaches in any sport find that balance of not overcoaching. Um, and, again, like I said, I've, I, I learned that and I lived that long ago. Uh, you, you have to you bring your team to, to a certain situation. You have a priority list. You, you know you can't cover everything. It's impossible, especially in day one, game one, especially in one training camp. And you got to let go of a lot. And just allow them to play. Um, so I, I'm in a good place I, I, because I just feel the guys gave us uh, great effort and great focus during training camp, and now it's time for them to play. And uh, you know, I guess one of the biggest things in coaching over the years um, that I've gathered is, you know, when you go through all these processes and crises as a coach and develop players, and you win, you lose, you go for championships. You, what you become very comfortable with is just coaching in the moment. Um, so you get excited about the moment uh, because you, you get a chance to just read and react and use the experience you have. And, and that might be in the moment, the post game. That might be breaking down film and saying, okay, this is what we're going to target in a video session tomorrow and practice the next day. And we need to do one on ones with this guy and that guy. But, uh, you know, I'm very comfortable coaching in the moment. And, taking information in as it comes to help correct. So I'm excited for tomorrow for that for all of that. It's a, finally we get to start the real process. But the thing in the moment is, is, is important, and, and I know you're focused on, on, on the product on the ice, but when you, you probably were reminded uh, or sensed that, I mean, the fan support, this one, it was preseason, but the work, there were very few people in the stands. How conscious or maybe subconscious in the back of your mind, your players' mind, is it? to having to win the fans back um, after what's gone on and, and the fact that they haven't been here and are hesitant to, to come back? Well, I, you know, foremost, you, you have to play, and I've said it 
before. I mean, our game is, our sport is entertaining. We need to play it that way. We need to play with the passion, the energy, and and I really excited over the summer that we brought players in that fit that, and they complement those here that have that. And you know, one of our our our, our only motto this year is is you know we, we talk about earning things, and that goes hand in hand with what you're mentioning, John. You, you know, you you have to earn respect. Uh, and it has to be re-earned every single day in our business. And we want players that know that, accept that, but love that. You know, they love the job that they're doing so much. Like, yeah, damn it, we'll go, we'll, we'll take on this task. And, uh, you know, I, I, again, that was a big part of when I took over. I, I just think we, we need to play an exciting, energetic style. And things will fall where they may. So I don't think it's in the back of our head or back of our mind, you know, the crowd. We have to do our job, and our job is to play the way we want, we want to. And we know uh, we want to make people proud of, of being part of – we want to be a part of Buffalo. Uh, I think these guys do, and we've made that part of our, our uh, discussions with them. And uh, you should be damn proud to be a hockey player. This is a privilege and an honor and play with that passion. Us coaches like to take the easy way out and find a defensive system in which it's easy to play and – the left wing lock came into play and it, 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 it generated low scoring games but wins for, for, for that coach. Why, what in your mind gives you the, the confidence to be able to be the aggressor and play an entertaining style knowing that it's going to be high scoring games and so that's what some coaches don't like? Well, the confidence I, I would say I have is I've done it for years and years and drilled it and practiced it and developed it and so I, I've, I've seen it work. Uh, if you look up one stat or t two stats that are kind of the same in the NHL, and you just look at it historically, the last place teams in the league winning percentage when they're up a goal at the end of the first period, when they score the first goal or when they're up a goal. And it's, it's incredible. It's, the winning percentage is most often what the top team in the NHL is overall in the standings. So when you look at that and you say, uh, if, the, if the, some of the last place teams in the league – have a winning percentage, 500 to 600, when they score the first goal of the game, why would you spend so much time on defense? Because you're going to be down goals, and you can't concede those games. And so I don't want to be conservative. There's lots of games and lots of winning depends on being ability to come back. And if you don't know how to do that and you only know how to defend, that's a recipe for disaster, in my opinion. And it's always been my approach to it, and it will continue to be that way for that reason. The schedule going back to normal, playing different teams, you're not playing the same handful you know, night in and night out. What benefits can there be from a coaching and developing standpoint with younger guys having to face different players around the league, having to face different you know, styles of play, you know, unlike last season when it was pretty predictable who you were going to face night in and night out? Yeah, you know, last I said it lots of times, and I still hold to it. Last season was extremely challenging because there was no escaping a good division in good teams You know, every night. Um, you couldn't sneak up on anybody. Uh, and, and, you know, now it's different with 30 teams. You, you are, you know, teams are sneaking up on each other all the time because you just, you, you can't factor in all the, you don't know the other team and they're not going to know you like, uh, like we did last year and uh, through the whole league and being in the same division. So, um, but I guess, Lance, it, it's still going to be us trying to get to our game every night. You know, we have a pre-scout. We certainly respect the other team. This team, this league is loaded with talented hockey players and teams, so you 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 have that that same respect for every team you play. They have players on that team and overall a team. If you don't do the right things, they're going to exploit you. Um, that's for certain in this league. So I think from the preparation side, we're looking more at consistencies that are from game to game rather than you know how how somebody's different than the next guy. Dylan Cousin is a high draft pick, and he had a really good world championship with Team Canada. Last year, just like the Sabres, might have been a tougher season. What's your evaluation of Dylan, and what's your expectation for him for his second season in the NHL? Yeah, I, you know, the Dylan, like everybody else, I, I don't have uh, expectations like a player should score this many goals or uh, achieve this much. Uh, I just want our players in the moment. I want, them in, I want them prepared for the next moment, practice hard, train hard, uh, know what they're targeting going into the next moment, game, practice, whatever it may be. 
uh, not get too far ahead of themselves. And, uh, uh, you know, when you have young players, um, they're taking in so much experience day to day uh, that if we keep the focus on what I just said, they take in each every they become better every day uh, at, a, at a faster rate. So we're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves with Dylan. Um, and that's going to be our continued approach with that and, and any guy, really. I know you've been watching a lot of films, but your brother was coaching Cole Caulfield. What have you learned from maybe Tony about Cole Caulfield? You're going to be facing him for the first time in the NHL. Yeah, he's a dynamic, uh, dynamic personality, a dynamic player. Um, very, very quick. You know, his, his skill set, not only is he a great shooter, he's got a great hockey sense and um, – Um, his quickness is, you know, as I just mentioned, there, there's lots of players in this league that can hurt you if you don't respect them. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's a talented player that you have to, you have to do that. And, um, but, yeah, I've watched him a lot. And I watched him as a kid even. And uh, I actually played with his father uh, on a junior team. So I've tracked uh, Cole and his brother for a long time. And he deserves to be where he's at. And I'm excited to see him, actually. Not score, though. I'm not excited to see him score. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.